mileage with Sikin Toha, first year nursing student at Central Mindanao University. And today I am going to demonstrate the procedure called assessing apical pulse. Before we can do the procedure, we're going to do an assessment which is to assess the patient's apical pulse and to assess any changes in rhythm and for the possible nursing diagnosis is fast irregular pulse and slow irregular pulse. For the materials needed for this procedure, of course, we need stethoscope, alcohol swab, alcohol-based hand rub for our hygiene, and of course, the gloves. And since we are all set, we're now going to start the procedure. Procedure number one, check medical or nursing care plan for frequency of pulse assessment. More frequent pulse measurement may be appropriate based on nursing judgment. And also, you need to identify the need to obtain an apical pulse measurement. This is to give the proper intervention to the patient. For procedure number two, perform hand hygiene. And you can put on PPE if indicated. This is to prevent the risk of contamination. And after that is the procedure number three in which you will need to identify the patient to give the proper intervention to the right patient. For procedure number four is to close the curtain if there is any for the privacy of the patient and to discuss the procedure to the patient to see if um, to assess her skills and how she can help you perform the procedure. And this is in order for you to create a good relationship and a good report with your patient. For procedure number five, you need to put on the gloves. This is to prevent the risk of contamination. Put on the gloves. And on the other side, Fix the other side using your other hand. Do it like this. For procedure number six, you need to use alcohol swab to clean the diaphragm of your stethoscope and use another swab to clean the earpiece if necessary. This is to reduce the risk of contamination. So first, we're going to clean the diaphragm by using alcohol swab. And now we're going to throw this away, the proper place. And another alcohol swab for the earpiece. That's it, we're going to throw these away. And for the step number seven, we need to assist the patient to a sitting position or reclining position and exposing its area. Okay, ma'am, let's stand up slowly. That's it. And now for procedure number eight, move the patient's clothing to expose only the apical side. But before that, you're going to hold the stethoscope diaphragm against the palm of your hands for a few seconds so that it can be comfortable for the patient when it's going to touch its skin. Now we're going to proceed with the step number 10, which is to palpate the space between the fifth and the sixth rib, also known as the fifth intercostal space and move to the left midclavicular line and then after that place the diaphragm over the apex of the heart so you need to do this since this is the most audible part of the body where the heart beats are heard properly so now we're gonna lift the shirt get exposed to the port And after that, 
Listen for heartbeat sounds like lub dub. Each lub dub counts as one beat. So S1 and S2 cycles are the heartbeat sounds. They are heart heart they are high pitch sounds that can be heard with the help of the diaphragm. Yeah. Procedure number 12, using a watch with a second hand, count the heartbeat for one minute. And now we're gonna count for one minute. After one minute, we got 63 beats per minute. So if it is if your patient is irregular, um, it is more accurate if you do it with a longer interval or longer time than one minute. Since my patient is a um, regular one, we only did a minute. And her pulse is normal since the range of normal beats are from 60 to 100. So hers is 63. For procedure number 13, when measurement is completed, you can now remove the gloves if you wore one and perform hand hygiene. Dispose the gloves, perform hand hygiene. Help the patient lie down in a comfortable position. And now, clean the diaphragm. Yes. And the wire. Dispose the alcohol swab. For procedure number 15, you can remove additional PPE if you use one. And as I did, perform hand hygiene. It is to reduce the risk of contamination or infection. And that ends our video for today. Thank you for watching.